everybody, and welcome to this very special edition of your LHH Alumni Partner Program. It's May, Military Appreciation Month, and I'm thrilled to be with you. My name is Rochelle Chapman. I'm the director in the ADECO Group U.S. Foundation, and I lead the Military Alliance Program across the ADECO Group, including Lee Heck Terrison. It is a joy to be with you today. We're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is how to be an advocate for the military community. So let's dive right in. So today we're going to be talking about three very tangible and specific things that you can do, whether you're in charge of developing your talent pipeline at your organization, or you're just sitting next to a veteran or a military spouse colleague. We're gonna talk about some very important and tangible ways that you can engage those colleagues and engage the military community at large when you're looking to bring new hires into your organization. So three things that we're going to talk about today, three keys to success. One is understanding the value of hiring military connected talent, and we're going to get into it. The second is understanding how to connect to that talent and where to connect to that talent. And third is how to keep that talent thriving in your organization. So first up, let's talk a little bit more about the values and benefits of hiring military connected talent. Both veterans and military spouses come with a host of valuable skills that are uh, important in the civilian workplace. Um, one interesting thing to note specifically about veterans is that 90% of the jobs that exist in the military also exist outside the military. So the reality is many service members come out of the service, not just with some really amazing soft skills, but hard technical skills that you're looking for at your organization. Let's get into some of those soft skills that really sets them apart from non-military connected talent. The first one, they excel at organizing teams, amazing team leaders. Very often in the military, young men and women are in charge of, you would be surprised how many people actually they're in charge of in the military. Leadership skills are grown and honed and developed at a very early age in the military. So even someone that served maybe just four years is coming out of the military with more leadership experience in that short amount of time than someone maybe who hasn't served. So something to think about. They're also very good at managing team setting goals um, and plans and actually putting those into action and seeing results. Oftentimes their life is dependent on it in the, in the past um, and they know how to do that. Second, they are disciplined. They know how to anticipate needs and um, they are extremely, really self-accountable in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. Who doesn't want that on, on their team? They're performance-driven, so they know, again, the importance of setting goals and also in reaching them. Um, and last but not least, and I, I can't underscore the importance of this one enough, they are very resilient and comfortable with uncertainty. A familiar saying in the military uh, is often that they're responsible for hurry up and then waiting. Um, orders can change on a dime in the military. Uh, so they are used to being in a world of constant change and being comfortable with that level of ambiguity uh, is something that not all of us are necessarily comfortable with. And so that's often a skill set that you're going to get when you are looking at someone in the military uh, in terms of in terms of a candidate or in terms of a hire at your organization. Um, when it comes to military spouses, uh, these are my people, this is my community. So uh, these folks are particularly near and dear to my heart. Um, one of the things that you will find when you engage with a military spouse is they are excellent at project management. They don't always recognize that or know that they are, but if you think about the skills that it takes to move every two to three to four years, reestablishing yourself, setting new networks, meeting new people, getting new schools for their kids and doctors, and just establishing a home that often 
the amount of organization that is required in doing that. Um, they may not always necessarily tell you that, but that's what I'm here for today is to remind you that that is something that they're really good at, even though they don't know it. It often doesn't always show up on their resume either. And so helping them to kind of talk about that experience and to be able to sell their, themselves and understand their value is really important. Second, they know how to grow where they're planted. Again, they move frequently. And so they know what it's like um, to build a network, whether that's with each other, with other military spouses, or within their community. Um, oftentimes, uh, not, not to sound too dramatic, but their life depends on it. Um, the, the connectivity that they have to continually reestablish um, takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of hard work. And they know the importance of connection. And I know for many of you, you're probably working at organization organizations where um, you have a culture of connection. These folks know how to grow that. They know how to foster that. They know how to build that. You're going to find that in military spouse talent. Interesting to note, uh, they are also more educated than their um, non-military uh, connected or civilian counterparts. So, so often, and sadly, because military spouse unemployment is so high for our community, um, they go back to school and they have more college education and advanced degrees, again, than their civilian counterparts. So they've got the education, we just got to give them the chance when it comes to employment opportunities. Third, they're extremely entrepreneurial. I was talking to a military spouse yesterday who set up her own online tutoring business. And to hear her talk about how she grew that business every single time they moved to a new duty station was really just incredible. Um, she was living in a lot of really remote locations. Her husband's in the Army. And she was a math and statistics major. Um, not a lot of jobs for math and statistics majors in really remote, small parts of the country or world. And so she used the skills that she had and built her own business. You'll see that time and time and time again with military spouses. And I know you all know the value of that attribute and skill in your own organization. So know that's inherent in them or a skill that they've built over time. Again, might not always be something you see jump off of a resume, but once you start to talk to them, you'll uncover that. Last but certainly not least, similar to veterans, military spouses are also extremely resilient and adaptable to change. Um, we are asked to, again, um, move on a dime sometimes. Uh, we're asked to be very nimble in our personal lives, with our families, with our children, uh, and we figure it out. It's not always easy, but it's certainly a skill uh, in my life that has been um, honed and has been developed over the years uh, and, and it is for other military spouses that I know as well. So a couple of, of things to keep in mind, maybe that you hadn't uh, considered before and some values and traits to look for the next time you talk to, interview, or meet um, a military spouse. So those are some of the values and benefits. Um, there are additional values and benefits, particularly to your organization when it comes to hiring veterans. There are tax benefits that have been extended to corporate America for hiring veterans, for hiring wounded service members. Uh, there's a bill out right now trying to extend that same tax credit to the military spouse community in hopes that that will help uh, drive down unemployment and underemployment in the military spouse community and drive up uh, employment. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I wanna move now next to the second tip that I want to share in keys to success. This is an important one because this is uh, how specifically uh, you can engage military connected talent. Again, specifically for those of you that are in a position where you are hiring or maybe you're on a DEI committee um, where you have input into this space. These are some things that you're going to want to share with those folks or with your teams. Okay. Um, one of the things that, that, that's really important, if at all possible in your organization, is to have a dedicated resource uh, that is responsible for military connected talent hiring. Somebody who, whose job it is or a team of people whose job it is um, to really 
develop a recruitment strategy around attracting military talent to your organization. They are going to want to know and understand the nuances of the military community. Often veterans and military spouses are great folks to hire for these roles. Um, obviously, they come with the cultural background and knowledge of what it's like in the military community. And, um, and so they're a good, a good reference. Or look within your organization to find people that have that background um, and that knowledge. In terms of training, SHRM uh, offers some really great free training. If you were coming in at ground zero and you don't really know uh, any of the, the crazy military acronyms that exist out there and you're not sure about the branches of service or what the culture in the military is like, SHRM has developed some fantastic free training, I might add, for those of you that are new uh, to this space, and I highly suggest you take a look at it. It's their Veterans at Work Training cer Certificate. It's a 10-hour program um, and will really get you up to a good base level understanding of what the military community is like, how to interview a, a military candidate and why that's different, what the nuances are around that interview, how to read a veteran resume, so on and so forth. So I can't, uh, I can't emphasize that enough. Training is really important. Another thing I would encourage you to look at is your job descriptions. You want to make sure that when you are posting job descriptions that they're military friendly. Double check and make sure that some of the skills or certifications that you deem uh, as a requirement for a particular role, sometimes military service is a nice substitute to some of those, some experience and some skills and some certifications. So you wanna make sure you've got, um, you've got some alignment there. Also, military job boards. Um, there are so many options out there in terms of where to post your openings to and where to find talent. There are paid opportunities. There are free opportunities. Um, we love free. Uh, LinkedIn is a great way to find military connected talent. Um, Indeed is another great way to find military connected talent. So make sure that you're including veteran, military experience, military spouse in those keyword searches so that you're, you're pulling up um, that skill set in those folks specifically. Um, and then also, this has been an important one for us at our company, is getting really grounded and connected to military organizations and military bases around the country. We're lucky because we're a big organization, and so our footprint allows us to develop relationships locally with military bases. But we also work across the country with organizations like the Wounded Warrior Project, and the VA, sometimes VFWs in certain markets, are, and American Legions um, do a lot of great work around in supporting employment for their local veteran community. Look for ways to get involved in those organizations because those organizations will be a window for you to find talent, um, particularly military connected talent. So um, you wanna take advantage of all of those opportunities. And then third, um, this is a topic that I love, which is retaining military connected talent. And I think this section is particularly important maybe for some of you who, again, maybe you're not involved in curating a talent pipeline at your organization, but you want to know how to support veteran colleagues or military spouse colleagues that you know are at your organization. There are some real tangible things that you can do here to help support um, to support those folks. <clears throat> and if you are part of building a talent pipeline, you really want to know some strategies around keeping the talent that you've worked so hard to find. So the first one is you really want to build out a process or a system for identifying this talent. Ideally, that's going to happen at the time of onboarding, whether you have a supplemental survey that you send out to new hires where they self-identify voluntarily as a veteran or military spouse, you really want to kind of get a base level number of where you're at in terms of your colleague population. Um, and again, also those that are that are that are self-identifying so that you can go back to them and reach out to them um, later for different opportunities to connect. Um, also, it's a great way to um, 
for, for new hires, it's a great way to reach out to them. If you have a mentorship program at your organization, or maybe this is a great opportunity to start one. And sometimes that I think mentorship is a little bit scary. It can be very informal. It could be a matter of connecting a current veteran colleague with a current new hire, veteran new hire, um, and allowing them to meet and have a virtual coffee chat. Doesn't necessarily have to be a formal, long um, type of, of, of program, but just an opportunity to, to make the veteran or military spouse feel super warm and welcome when they join your great organization. Same goes for establishing employee resource groups. If your organization is big on um, network groups or BRGs or ERGs, depending on what you call them, um, make sure that you invite uh, your new military spouses and veteran colleagues or existing colleagues uh, to those groups. And I always encourage you to be uh, inclusive. We have a military spouse employee resource group at our organization, which I um, have led for the last nine years. It's open to all colleagues who want to be an advocate and in support of the military spouse community. So we welcome everybody um, and I encourage you to do the same. The second thing that I would think about when you're um, talking about or thinking about mulling over how to retain this specific talent is to really take advantage of highlighting your corporate values. You have to remember that um, so many service members join the military out of a sense of service or duty to serve. So they like organizations that are service minded because oftentimes they are. So make sure that those corporate values are listed up front um, so that they, they know those corporate values and they can align themselves with those corporate values. Also, I would say some of the veterans that I work with and military spouses I work with make the best volunteers especially military spouses. I had mentioned earlier that we're often unemployed or underemployed. And so if we're not going to school, we're often or um, most commonly volunteering, using our time to give back either directly to the military community or to the, to the larger community in an effort to stay connected. So leverage those folks when you've got um, volunteer opportunities at your organization. Same with any kind of philanthropic efforts um, that your company leads. And DEI initiatives, bring them into your DEI DE groups, uh, invite them to join. They have a wonderfully diverse set of experiences and skills, some of which we talked about earlier. Um, I can't think of a better group to be included in some of the DEI initiatives that you have at your organization. <clears throat> Last but not least, show appreciation for military service. This is probably one of my favorites and something that anybody in your organization can participate in. I mentioned at the top of this call that May is Military Appreciation Month. Take that opportunity to say thank you to somebody you work with who served. Military Spouse Appreciation Day is the Friday before Mother's Day. Of course, we have Memorial Day at the end of the month, and the entire month now is dedicated to showing appreciation to mil the military community and to military families. So think of fun ways that your organization can either create a luncheon or do some type of internal event to thank colleagues for their service. Volunteer with a military organization in your local community to show appreciation. Write notes, send an email to somebody that you know who served and thank them for their service. A simple thank you goes such a long, long way. I wanna thank you for your time and your attention today. Um, I hope that you learned a little bit more uh, about ways that you can become involved or become an advocate for the military community or colleagues who have military service that you work with. It's been a pleasure being with you today, uh, and I look forward to speaking to you again in a future session. Thanks, everybody. Happy Military Appreciation Month.